guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back to my channel. What a mess, huh? <laughs> Should I zoom out a little bit? There we go. I guess it doesn't matter, does it? Okay. So, what I wanted to talk about today was the art of collage, of assemblage, you know, putting things together layer by layer. And of course, there's um, there's artists that are um, do this for a living. So whether they they make hanging artwork or like on a canvas or some sort of a sculptural element, maybe it's going to be like a tabletop kind of a diorama kind of a thing. Um, maybe you are a junk journaler or a mixed media artist, and you want to make either a page with some collage or maybe even the cover of a book. You want that collaged. All these kinds of things um, kind of get grouped into, into this area of collage or assemblage. So um, this is overwhelming, right? And so, so, and you can't even see everything. Um, there is a lot involved or a lot that could be involved in collage and so let's break it down a little bit and see if we can maybe set out a thought process so that if this is something that maybe you haven't done before or maybe you've done it before but you don't feel very confident in doing it um, maybe this will help you to kind of build a little bit of a technique that you can work through and think your way through so that you can begin and not be overwhelmed by the you know unlimited possibilities that there is in collage. So there are some things that you need to think about first and foremost get out a piece of paper and start writing it down. Um, if you have trouble with gathering your thoughts and and being overwhelmed by the amount of, of possibilities and ideas. Just get out a piece of paper and you don't have to draw anything out, but maybe write down the, the flow that you are thinking about. So color tones, the, you know, the basics. Do you want to do something dark? and grungy? Do you want to do something light and shabby? Do you want to do something colorful and mid-century vintage? Do you want to evoke an emotion? Or do you just want it to be a collection of things that makes you happy personally? So think about, think about the senses. We've got sight, touch, scent, sound, and taste. Okay, you don't have to lick your collage. But think about when somebody or you, could be just for you, sees your collage, what do you want to see? What kind of elements are important to you to see first? Because some things will be layered on the bottom and will be less obvious until you really, really start looking and examining. And then other things will be brought to the top or on the surface layer that you're going to notice right away. That's important. So don't layer something underneath that you want to be more prominent. What about touch? So if your item is going to be going, let's say it's going to be a page in a junk journal or a scrapbook or an album or, you know, whatever, art, art journal, you know, do you want there to be a textural element that will be pleasing to feel? that it's either soft or it's crunchy or it's smooth, it's rough. Think about if that is important to you. What about sound? As you, if it is going to be in an interactional kind of element, so if it's going to be a page in a book or an art journal, um, do you want it to sound like anything particular when you turn the pages? Charms can be pinned on and as you turn the pages you will hear them fall onto the page. Um, different um, elements that can be removed and then placed back can make certain sounds. 
that maybe remind you reminiscently of something in your childhood or something that made you happy or maybe just something that made you emotional. Um, what about scent? So if it is for you and, and this is what you are or somebody in your family or a friend or somebody that you know real well, are you going to be adding some kind of scent? There are essential oils and there are perfumes. There are natural elements that you can use in your, in your books um, or your pieces, your artwork to have a certain scent to them. Um, if you are putting something up for sale and you decide to use scent, just make sure that you plainly put that in the description in case somebody is very sensitive to scent because then maybe they wouldn't want um, that kind of a piece. Okay, flat or dimensional? Is your collage going to be a page in a book, journal, album, scrapbook, you know, does it need to be somewhat flat so that a book can close? Can it be multi-dimensional? It's gonna hang on the wall, it's gonna sit on a bookshelf so it doesn't matter. Um, also something to think about. Are you gonna have a theme? So is there a certain, is there a certain subject? Um, whether it's a date in time, um, a person, a place, a thing, an emotion, is it gonna have a theme or is it just gonna be a random hodgepodge, pack rat <laughs> kind of a feeling? Okay, so these are the kinds of things that can be used in collage and this is just a small sampling of things that can, can be used. So let's go through some of the things now that we've talked about maybe some of kind of the basic um, beginner things that you kind of need to be thinking about if you are having problems coming up with how to do this in the first place. I know some of you can probably just sit down and do something and you don't even have to think about it. It just happens organically. And then there are some they are like, no, I need a plan. <laughs> and that's great. Either way, either way, it's fine. So, um, like I said, these are some different things that you can use in your collage. Let's talk about some of these things. So, there is like physical things like papers. So papers can be vintage or new. Um, they can be photos, cabinet cards, book pages, letters, envelopes, sheet music, receipts, um, napkins, uh, all these different things that are kind of paper related. You know, here is a book of old, of old receipts that are invoices that you can, you know, you can fill out napkins. Here's some ephemera that you can either use real ephemera, you can print out ephemera. Here is a die cut book plate. And of course, die cuts come in all shapes and sizes. You know, there's floral and animals and um, there is, you know, tissue paper of different kinds. What about um, postcards? Um, pieces of craft card stock, photographs, all, all these things, uh, dictionary pages, you know, old book pages. What about our eco prints that we did? Absolutely. Maybe this could be your base. Set that aside. Um, here's one that I, I did some paper marbling on, just an old dictionary page. Here are some end sheets out of an old book. Here is a printed letter. It's not a, um, it's not a, it's a real letter, but I printed it out on tea stained paper. What about scrapbook paper? Just pieces of ephemera from the back of Tim Holtz or Graphic 45 or Seven Gypsies or Echo Park or whatever. Um, pieces of, of scrapbook paper, pieces of old wallpaper, marbled paper, you, I think you get the idea. I think you get the idea. Here's some old ledger. I mean, it goes on and on and on. Um, and, it, and when thinking about things like papers, you gotta think about your base. So if, are you going to be building this collage on a, 
on an art journal page or a junk journal page or a scrapbook? You know, is that going to be your foundation? Or if you're going to be hanging it on the wall and using a canvas, then that's a different kind of foundation. If it's going to be hanging on the wall, um, you got to make sure that things are, you know, glued on in a way that they're not going to be falling off. <laughs> um, you got to think, so think about your adhesives and, and the, the way that your piece will be used or, or looked at, right? So you can use bases like this is the back of an old, like a notebook, nice sturdy chipboard. Here is a piece of half inch foam core board. You can start on something like this, just scraps of that. So think about your base. Um, what about other elements that will be going on top of your base elements? You can do things like, like stencils. And what do you want to use with your stencil? Do you want to use like different kinds of paints? Um, here's some metallic. Do you want to use some texture pastes or modeling paste? Do you because it will be textural? It would be more of a a feel kind of of an effect. You can even add paint, acrylic paint, to modeling paste and color it if you want. And then different um, different techniques can go on top of modeling pastes inks and other paints and other artist mediums. So, you know, you've got gesso, you can, you can watercolor, you can get out your colored pencils and shade around. So, oh, it's endless, right? So if you're going to be using something like a modeling paste or a, or a texture paste, you might want to get yourself a little, you know, a little squeegee or just a thick card that you can spread your paste through. There are stamps, so like stamps and inks. So here's a couple of beautiful stamps that I just, you know, I just kind of, I have a lot to put away, right? This is a lot to put away. So I just grabbed a couple of stamps and I grabbed some ink. I grabbed some Distress Oxides that, you know, also can be used in different ways. Uh, the Distress Oxides, you can spray them with water and then they turn into other effects other than just regular distress ink. Um, this is the stays on in several colors and so this is great for surfaces that traditional ink will wipe off from. And then this is just regular, regular old ink. So let me set that kind of aside a little bit. We will move on. What about fabrics? And so fabrics and textiles can uh, include so many different things, right? So what about thread or silk embroidery floss? There's burlap, you know, hemp twine. We've got this recycled silk yarn, which is, you know, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Uh, cheesecloth in different colors, silk ribbons. There's trims that, um, these are vintage sari trims pieces of doilies. This is not old fabric. This is some Tim Holtz, some of his dictionary fabric. Um, here is a piece of just old muslin. Here's some more trim work. Um, this is a piece of um, like, like brocade satin. So all these things can also be added elements to your collage. Um, you don't have to just do paper or, you know, and paint you can start adding more elements. So that's something that you need to think about too. Is it going to be an all textile collage, an all paper collage? Is it going to be a mixture of everything? Um, are you going to sew on your paper, your, your textiles? Is that something that you're going to want to hand stitch or machine stitch? Another thing to think about, right? Okay, so Let's set that aside for now. There are punches and like die cuts, you can punch out shapes to, to place in your collage. You can paint over them, you can stain over them, you can dye over them, all kinds of things, right? Um, what about washi tape? So washi tape is a beautiful yet very simple, 
quick thing to add to collage elements. Um, they come in so many different styles and themes and colors. You can pretty much find a washi tape for whatever you want, right? Um, what about, um, and this is something that I am partial to, is numbers and quotes from books. You guys remember when I uh, started doing these little quotes that I clip out of old novels, little paperback novels, um, and then also my number quotes that I like to print out. And I did add these to the expedition kit. There's a big page of, of number, uh, random number codes that can be printed out onto tea stained paper or parchment or you know whatever you like. And they're just ready to rock and roll. They're just random numbers, codes that just add a little bit of personality and a little bit of interest along with, of course, of course, the little phrases. So you can clip out phrases or just single words uh, maybe that means something to you or just something that you find quirky or funny or poignant and save those save those this is this is a rabbit hole that you can fall into if ever you're just sitting down in the evening and you want to relax and just get out an old paper back or something that maybe you're not using anymore or something that's falling apart get a pair of scissors and start cutting out little phrases it's it's addictive it's addictive just gonna tell you now here is a little um, uh, a little office stamp that that I made in Photoshop and um, some of these if you follow I'll put the link below the video to my Flickr page you will be able to find several sheets of ephemera that you can you can uh, download and print out and use in your projects whether it's collage or whatever, but some of these, oh, it's upside down. <laughs> some of these are over there, so maybe you'll find that fun. What about like, like textural elements like metal and um, this is amber. So Mary has, Mary has amber, my friend Mary. And so these are little droplets of real, you know, fossilized tree sap. And some of them have little bugs in them. And it's real light. They're really, really light, so they don't add a lot of weight to collage. But man, look at all the different colors. There's dark ones and milky light ones, and then there's honey-colored ones. And oh, they're just, they're exquisite, Mary. They're exquisite. And then Kim, bless your heart, Kim. Like she knows, she, she knows me. So she sent me keys. Oh my goodness, I, I probably sat, when she sent me these keys, I probably sat and went through every single one. So she sent me a baggie of keys, and these are subway keys, skeleton keys, locker keys, you name it. But what a great element to add to a collage. Um, just be aware that it, these add some weight. So anything that you're going to add to your collage that's going to add some weight Make sure that, one, it's easy to turn a page if you're going to be putting it in a book or an album or something like that. Um, it's going to be hanging on the wall or it's a sculptural element or a diorama, shadow box kind of thing. It doesn't really matter. But just be aware that you'll need some, you know, pretty good adhesive for these. And then there's little charms, little charms. So there's coins and there's gears and there's like, these are like the little Tim Holtz pins. What about old buttons? What about watch parts and little little uh, you know pen nibs for calligraphy? Um, do you remember when we made these little dictionary page buttons? And then some of them we put the the buttons on top of the the vintage buttons. Come on, camera. There we go. Vintage buttons on top of them. And then we added a little, you know, little hole to hang so that we could hang them from something. So that was, you know, those are fun. Um, there's all kinds of little charms that you can get old pieces of jewelry. Um, maybe you've got some costume jewelry that, you know, you're not using. You know, little keys, a little gypsy bell. There's beads. Ugh, beads of plenty. You know, go to the store and try to get by the bead aisle without, you know, stopping and gasping, right? Beautiful, beautiful things. 
um, little, like this is a little Tim Holtz charm that says Inspire. Um, I made these out of just some thick craft uh, card and it's just a little tag with a, with a eyelet in it and I left it blank because I didn't, you know, I left them blank because then I could adapt them. I could put a number code on them. I could decoupage something over the top. You know, all kinds of things you can embellish them with to go with whatever you're doing. Do you remember when we made these? Um, also, I'll put the link. I gotta remember all these links. Uh, when I got the air dry clay and we went to town and we made some little um, typewriter typewriter keys <laughs> and so these are super light they don't they don't add a lot of weight to your pages and so you could use these all over the place and then I made these little charms I I stamped them um, on that clay and let it dry Wow and clips little clips 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 I love these these are Please, please correct me if I am wrong. I think the Paper Studio at Hobby Lobby makes these little vintage-y looking clips. And Tim Holtz also has some like that. I'm looking around. I'm trying to figure out. Oh, I have this little, this little basket and it's got some things that I've, I've added to it. These are like seven gypsies, like flashcards that I got at, I think it was like Tuesday morning. It's been several months ago. But these can be aged and used in collage. There are some beautiful, beautiful old postcards I have in here. And photographs. Um, photographs that mean something to you. Photographs of people you know. Photographs of people you don't know. <laughs> um, little calling cards. There are more, oops, I'm flipping stuff out. More marble paper. Um, little advertisements like old old Victorian these are these are real um, but you can if you have some old ephemera that you don't want to use the real thing um, then you can just scan it and print it and use it um, as long as it's out of copyright which these things are well out of copyright um, so all these kinds of things can be used in your collage so that is food for thought I'm just that that's what this video was about, was food for thought. And then I will be doing a video where I will be taking some of these elements and I will be building something and we'll talk about it while it gets built. How's that? All right, guys, thank you for joining me for my little um, collage food for thought video. And I will see you very soon in the next one. Bye, guys.